Hi, Mom. Hi, Dirk. Maybe you can say your name or start with who you are. Okay. My name is Margaret Cordemont. When you were born, maybe? I was born in Germany. But I have to add a land that I love very much. And um, I lived there with my mother dying and the bombers came down very terrifically and she had to go into a sanitarium because she had cancer and uh, she stayed there for many many years until she died all the way through the bombing that we had it was just unbelievable uh, uh, at I'm, I'm stuttering when I say that because I feel so close to it because I was living there when all the bombs came down and all the homes were broken and all the people were killed and um, it has subsided in my vision quite a bit because I was fortunate enough to be in Germany when I was just a little child and my, my dad and my aunt, her name is Gretchen, and my dad was Hubert. And they took care of me very well and just loved me to pieces. I... Uh, Where were you born? In Lindlar. Lindlar. Lindlar, Germany, and it is near the forest in, in Lindla, where the train, the, the regular commuter train goes Where through was that? in 1934. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> to remember all the things that were there to remember now today, I would love to, but I think over the time I will be able to because it will come back into my conscience. Little Victor was his name and he was a little person that uh, all the Germans I think in our family are lucky to be very tall except for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like being short. But Victor, he was the forest manager. Yes, and he had his, his job, right? he had his uh, uh, gun. He had it over his shoulder every morning. He had his little hat on with his plume and it would go like this in the wind. And um, he would first uh, travel, well he first, not only first, he only had himself and his feet. There was no transportation for anybody like him. He had to do it all by walking. And uh, he made many friends in, in the animal kingdom at that time because there were so many restrictions for him not to be able to be a, uh, a person that kills, but also just to check that they were all right and that they didn't need anything. He did that also. And he, uh, Oma also had a, a brown box that would go with him so he'd have a breakfast. And was that Hubert's dad? No, Hubert? that's Mama's. Oh, it was your mother's dad? Yeah, okay. Lucia. So Luc your great, it was your grandfather? Yeah. Okay. And... Um, Did you ever get to go with him? Or? No, I just walked on the on the edge and waved him goodbye and waved him in again when he came back. And hmm. he was one of the uh, I don't want to call him meek because he had a character you couldn't bend. He was totally uh, a, a, a person that carried the gun. He never used it, to my my knowledge. But he was a, a protector more than he was a hunter. 
And I think all the, the, uh, the girls, uh, my mom had four sisters. They all respected him very, very, very much. And also mom, uh, grandma, because grandma was uh, uh, a German lady that had four daughters and she, uh, she would give orders in the, after they got up and had breakfast, she would give orders in the, the thing in the, uh, in the way she thought it would be needed that day. So everybody didn't just go and do what they wanted to they do. Did what she said. That's it. So where did you come into the deal? I, mean, I well, uh, first of all, I was born there, you know, with my oma and opa, and all the the three sister of mama, and uh, mama never, except for when she died, they uh, let her go to Lintla as a last trip. She knew she was dying and they took her out of the hospital. And um, it was a, a wonderful feeling because Mama was so subdued and so ready to give her life to Christ because when she was born and right after when she was six or seven years old, she had given her uh, her life to Christ. She wanted to be a nun. Wow. And... Uh, well, good thing she didn't do that, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but um, Mama had, had a, one of the strongest uh, constitutions, even though she had cancer of the... Uh, of the, the tuberculosis. Yeah, tuberculosis, yeah. right. Uh, she had, uh, before she married Papa, she and Papa had gotten friendly and they were talking about the, how my Mama kept saying, I want to be a, a nun, uh, but I like you very much. And I don't know how long that went on because there was not in span of time, there was not enough time to, to put all that in. Yeah. But mother also, mom, mama, I called her, also had a, a way of being mama. Even though she was not with me, but she would send greeting cards and she would lace them on all four ends, make four of those, and she would make a little box. And then the, the nuns at the uh, clinic would, uh, first they, they would bless it with uh, I, I was, um, holy, water. holy water. And then they put it in a little uh, envelope and she would send it to me. That's where you got your creativity. creativity. Yeah. Wow, well, that's something. And uh, it, to me, it was just wonderful to get one of those because it, it meant. Connected you with her, huh? Yes. And that's the only way I could. Wow. Well, while that was going on, Mama and. Uh, uh, no, not while it was going on, but just before they got married. They got married in, in Lintla, in the cathedral, where she was born and I was born. Mamas, and, and uh, uh. So she was born and raised in Lintla as well? Right. Wasn't that, you told me the last name was Schulze or something? Schulte. Schulte. L L-T. So it's S-C-H-U-L-T-E. Right. Schulte. Schulte. Okay. That was this Victor Schulte? Yeah. Okay. And, um, and then the story I get from Papa, because after she, they were married, she became very, very, very ill. 
and but they were in Lindla for that time that she was dying, so nobody could go see her. How old were you when that started? Four years old, and I was there too. I was very, very scared. There's a lot of things going on. Yeah. If you were born in '34, the first six or seven years of your life, you were in the buildup of the Second World War. Right. And the and, bombing. Yeah. Oh yes, the bombs so you came had it down. Happening at once. Uh, yes. That that was the the way my life was because it. It, it didn't work any other way. Everybody had to be sufficiently adapt to what was going on, right or left. Mm -hmm. Because either the bombs might get you, or the SS. Papa had to hide me in, in our home when the SS came through, because after four years old, they wanted to take me. They would just take little girls and boys and you'd never see him again. Okay. Scary. Yeah, it was scary, but um, it, it was so much of my daily life and that word comes out again and again in my life, self-sufficiency. And I had to be self-sufficient. Nobody was pity parting me. When there were things that needed to be done, or sit in a bunker, or crochet, or knit, or, or sew holds, I was sitting there doing that. Did it grow up fast? Yes. So you hardly, hardly even had a childhood problem? I didn't have any childhood. Mm. I, uh, at uh, uh, five years, I had a couple of uh, uh, let's say, maybe half a year of schooling. And um, I had to walk to the kindergarten, who was a mile from our home, but I walked by myself. And during the winter, when we didn't have uh, shoes, or we had shoes that had holes in them in the, under the foot. Sole, yeah. The sole, no sole. We about found some uh, papers. We stuffed that in there. So by the time we got back from school, it it was you know all deteriorated. And um, That'd be tough. yeah, it. Uh, I think in in a way everybody thought I was. Uh, I was a cute thing. My, my, my dad loved me a heck of a lot. Um, but maybe in the cute, the cute, uh, cute thing was a, a strong, small German that would never give up. I think you. I built it. You had to do that. Yeah, I, I built that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to make it this far. No. That's why, yeah, that's why the Lord has let me here. Yeah. You know, it, it's, uh, um, it's not self-made, because the Lord had to make it for me first and show me. And then somebody gave me a couple of old uh, skates, uh, ski skates. And there was a little pond and I, uh, the ice skate, ice the skates, yeah. yeah, and I, I took those things and I went into that little pond and I fell down. I get up again. <laughs> it was something to achieve. Huh? Yeah, it was. That's all you could do when you were like that and alone, probably, is just try to figure out what you can do to be happy. Right. right. Well, it, it's the self, the self had to be first, but it was not me being first. God always came in because Papa always explained to me that God, Father God, was always with us, 
no matter where there were bombs or peace, people were killed or, uh, or a stupid thing like we had, uh, what do you call Flüchtlinge, that come into the house and stay with you because their, their house is uh, uh, refugees. refugees. We yeah. had refugees on the third floor and they got rations, n n not us. We didn't get rations. So the young girl was on the third floor and she said, one day she, she called me and she says, I have a piece of uh, bread for you and would you like it? And I said, oh sure, because I'm so hungry. And, and it was dropped from the third floor to the bottom. And their rations. Yes, but it hit me in the mouth and it was at least a week old. Ooh, so, hard. yeah. Um, but I, I managed to break it little pieces and eat it. It, it was wonderful. So when did you, uh, I know a little bit, I mean, from the time you were born till you were about 10 is kind of the area when the Second World War took place? Yes, and so finished. Were, right, so I think in four. your mom died when you were around nine? Yeah. And then when you were about 10, it stopped, everything it stopped. Stopped, yeah. The war stopped, but was that when you went over to Tante Gretchen? Or? No, uh, uh, they sometimes Papa had to be in a uh, um, in a home that was being built for him, and uh, also he was an architect. Yeah. Okay. He built homes, and he had built a couple at the, on the Rhine River, and uh, he was also a very artistic man. He he made every piece of furniture out, out of a beautiful wood that was in our home, in our house. Mm. Everything was gorgeous. Even my bedroom. The he built it? He built it, yeah. An architect can build all the, if you have wood, everything. everything wood, huh? Yes. It, oh. it was beautiful. I think Tom Gretchen told me when I was over there that he had something to do with the Long Eugen building. Yeah. That big tall building that's on the Rhine. And right, Long, yeah. That he was some, maybe one of the architects that worked on that. They, he did, he did. And then they stopped him because they didn't want anybody that knew how to build that well uh, to, uh, to be able to command anybody to say something different. S S S secret, service, secret yeah. service. It was not the SS anymore. Yeah. Not after the war, but still, yeah, it, was it was very secretive. And um, so you went there. So he gave you to Tante Gretchen every now and then to yes. take care of you. Yes. To well, he needed some space, and he had to go out of town sometimes. And then because the the. Uh, German industry was picking up again and Germany was able to rebuild Germany within five, 50, 55 years. Everything was standing like it belonged there. Mm. And I thought to myself, it must be a little feeling like I did when I went to the pond and, and used my skates, <laughs> doing something constructive. Germans are enterprising people. Yeah, and, and they're talented. And, uh, and then the, the wonderful thing about Papa, he was the only architect that had his own trees. He was grooming his own trees in the Black Forest. So when his homes were to the top, but still uh, visible to the inside, he took one of those trees, brought it in, and put it in a, in a pail, and he put it on the top of that uh, house to show that it was finished. That it was finished, and it was life. You know, it stayed life. I was wondering where that tradition came from, like you 
see that often in Germany. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the tree. That's the tree it, um, yeah. And like a Maybaum or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's a it, weird tradition. Yeah. They don't do that here. No. It, it's too much trouble here. And I don't think it would bring the same satisfaction that if you have some papa in your home and that builds. And then he also uh, was very talented in music in that he would whistle any ardia and any waltz and any uh, beautiful music. He could just pick it up and he'd blow, blow the whistle through the whole house. Told me that before. Yeah. It's amazing. We're pretty good at whistling too. Yeah, I know. You taught me how to whistle. Yeah. Through your two fingers. Yeah. Blowing everybody's eardrum out. Mm hmm. Well. You never had to scream for the kids. You could just. Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> remember that. Yeah. So, what's, what's some of the highlights that you that you kind of remember, maybe, that you would think that are important to talk about? You know, either in Germany or I know some of those things you just said were really important for me because I didn't know a lot of that stuff. Oh, well, good. But, that, you know, I mean, like the ice skating thing. Yeah. That, you know, that grandma was born in Lintar. I didn't even know that. So, yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe some of the things, I mean, it doesn't have to all be good. No. Because it's probably not all good. It's but. not all good, Vero. Uh, when, when Mama uh, died, um, Papa had been going to this bunker when the, the air raid started and he, he met a lady that was Ulla's mother and her husband had died of a heart attack. So they, you know, in, in all the terrible stuff, their two hearts got together. Uh, Papa didn't know that she was totally mentally ill. So that for a while though she was working for the the Bundeshaus in four or five languages until one time when Papa built the last house she was upstairs in the kitchen and put the the mattress, the mat mattress high, uh, the gas uh, in, the oven. in the oven, and locked the door, and she killed herself. And poor Ulla, she was the only one left out of the family. Her mother also committed suicide because she was so mentally Stim, 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 uh. yeah. So that that was wow. a real rough time. But she became your sister. Yeah. And she and didn't die from committing suicide. She was tough. She was tough. Yeah. Well, luck. You know, Ula told me a story about how her mom met uh, Uber Grandpa. Yeah? That they were on a train and they ran into each other on a train or something. Uh, I don't know. I um, didn't ever heard that. They were traveling and, yeah, she said that's how they met and they made a date or something. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they they wanted, I think she said they wanted to see each other but they didn't exchange names. <laughs> and then they saw each other in the, in the city or something yeah. walking by each right. other again. And that's when it started. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Yeah, she told me that. Yeah. We had that house at on the Rhine River, beautiful place. So we had, really, I just lived with them about a year. And then I met your father and uh, uh, went to America with him. That's another story, right? Yeah, that's dead. Yes, when he, horse. yeah, when he in, we were in, uh, this is, you know, it's, what is it, 67 years old that I'm talking about that in retrospect of uh, where all this happened. Uh, we, uh, well, 
I was in Trier. I was working in a coffee bar. You were like 17, right? 17. And um, I was making a little money, but it, it wasn't, you know, it, it's right after the war. And the soldiers are still having soldier garb on, so it, it was not a comfortable place to be. Yeah. But, um, laws, huh? yeah, well, I'm, I'm one time, I was, I looked up and uh, this, this soldier, Slovakian soldier, came to me and said, hi, and uh, I say, I told him he could speak English really well, and he said, yes, so can your friend? And I said, I don't have a friend. So he uh, said, well, maybe you should think about it differently. He told me that for me to go over here and make sure that you announce that I will marry you, not ever seeing each other. Not, you so know. this was a, a colleague soldier of dad's? Yeah. That a came friend. That gave you the message. Yeah. That dad wanted to marry you. Right. And he'd never met you before. No. He just saw you in the. Yeah, in the, in the, the cafe. It's still there, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Huh. It's a hotel. It's a hotel restaurant. Yeah. Right. Yeah, pension. Yeah. Yeah. That the I worked there after the war, at seventeen. Bad memories. Well, you met Dad. Yes, uh, that was after my bad memories. Thank God. I did. I did cho choose him to be married to, because he he had the stick two of this to keep coming back for nine nine weeks every Sunday. He'd bring this soldier with him, the Slovenian. To translate. To translate. Well, but we never talked. Yeah. So Dad was sitting there and just telling things to the Slovenian and... Hopefully the Slovenian was translating properly. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had, when we finally met, we had the little Lilliput, the... The little dictionary. Dictionaries and had... I but have those, by the way. Yeah, I know. I gave them to you. They're they're a treasure. Yeah. They're a treasure. We had some. They were a little understanding, and Dad didn't do any understandings. He wanted things the way they were, and yeah, it was cute. But we had to to really struggle to even be. Uh, in, in view of each other, you know, coming from the Porta Negra in Trier. We, I had told uh, the Slovenian, if you bring him into his car, because he's got a, a, a BMW, he, he got it in a, in a, a, a um, card game. Card game. And, uh, he, he thinks that it's his pride and joy. So make sure it isn't scratched or anything else. I just, uh, after losing Papa, uh, he had never seen Suzanne. So I, I had taken. That's right, Suzanne went with you. This May, yeah, remember. right. And it it never affected her. It's it's like she she heard him speak and say hi, and he was on the couch, you know, the couch that he would be laying on, and then he he had his little tablets under his tongue because. Opium or something. Yeah so he could handle it, and he was dying, and uh, I was not happy. I didn't want to lose him. Mm. 
Yeah, it's a daughter and a father, it's really... And then the only child. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, one thing, when we, when Elsa was still available, because she was so ill too, she had the, the elephant. elephant disease. Yeah. Haven't well. just yeah, uh, but I had made a made a promise to Suzanne that we would go for a walk every day. We'd go there was pretty trees and things, and we'd go to the grocery store so she could pick a piece of candy out that she really would like. And we made that trip every day. You and Suzanne. Yeah. It was a big bond that we made that, and I explained Papa because she had not seen a person die. The unknown. 